All right, let's go over some Project 2025 stuff. For those who do not remember, Project 2025 is the super mega document that goes over all the policy changes that should be done if a Trump presidency ends up becoming a reality. It is a 900-page mandate for conservative leadership. We've gone over all kinds of stuff right now, but I think now it's time we talk about how they want to deport people from the United States. That's a big one. Trump ran hugely on immigration and getting rid of people at the border, uh, despite the fact that President Biden has also been deporting people from the United States in the last like three years. It was what, 775,000 people. So despite the fact that the same border shit is happening under Biden as was happening under Trump, apparently they want to make things uniquely bad for people who are trying to get into the country. So let's go ahead and take a look here at what is said in the mandate for leadership. Our primary recommendation is that the president pursue legislation to dismantle the Department of Homeland Security. After 20 years, it has not gelled into one DHS. Instead, its various components, different missions have outweighed its decades-long attempt to function as one department, rendering the whole disjointed rather than cohesive. Breaking up the department along its mission lines would facilitate mission focus and provide opportunities to reduce the overhead and achieve more limited government. In lieu of a status quo DHS, we recommend that U.S. Customs Border Protection be combined with Immigration Customs, U.S. Citizenship and Immigration Services, the Department of Health and Human Services, Office of Refugee Settlement, and the Department of Justice, Executive Office of Immigration Review, and Office of Immigration uh, into standalone border and immigration agency at the cabinet level, more than 100,000 employees, making it the third largest department by manpower. So, okay, they want to consolidate all of that there, which I don't under, I, I actually do not understand what the implications of that would be. And I'm, I'm willing to admit when I do not know what the implications of a particular thing are. Those who are more studied on border security, maybe you can let me know in the comment section what the end results of that particular combination effort would end up being. Then it says the Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Department uh, Security Agency should be moved to the Department of Transportation why that feels like they're two very separate things the federal emergency management uh should be moved to the department of the interior or if combined with CISA to the department of transportation the u.s coast guard should be moved to the doj and in a time of full-scale war the, uh, to the department of defense alternatively usg uh cg should be moved to dod for all purposes the U.S. Secret Services should be divided into two, with the protective element moved to the Department of Justice and the financial enforcement element moved to the Department of the Treasury. The Science and Technology Directorate should be moved to the DOD, and the offices, Office of Countering Weapons of Mass Destruction should be moved to the FBI. All the remaining supporting components could be dismantled because of their functions already exist in the moving components as well as receiving departments. Cutting these costs would save the American taxpayers significant sums. So, no, it, it really wouldn't. So I like how this says that it will save the American taxpayers a certain amount of money, but the reality of the situation is our taxes are largely unaffected one way or another, regardless of how the government chooses to spend those dollars. All that will do is allocate dollars to be maybe better spent on government things or maybe just pocketed by people in the departments. I don't know says cybersecurity is the same as transportation because the internet is just a series of tubes. No, we're not. We're not. This is not Futurama. Mission statement, the Department of Homeland Security protects the American homeland from and prepares for terrorism and other hazards in both the physical and cyber realms. Provides for secure and free movement of trade and travel and enforces U.S. immigration impartially. Overview, the DHS was created in the aftermath of the terrorist attacks of September 11th and subsequent mailings of anthrax spores. The Homeland Security Act of 2002, which created the Department State that the DHS's primary mission is to prevent terrorist attacks within the United States, reduce the nation's vulnerability to terrorism, minimize the damage from and assist in the recovery from any terrorist attacks, prepare and respond to natural and man-made crises and emergencies, and monitor connections between illegal drug trafficking and terrorism, coordinating efforts to sever such connections and indirect illegal drug trafficking. 
Unfortunately for our nation, the federal government's newest department became like every other federal agency, bloated, bureaucratic, and expensive. It also lost sight of its mission priorities. DHS has also suffered from... God damn it. Here we go. I knew we would hit the insanity eventually. J cue it up. The DHS has suffered from the left's wokeness and its weaponization against Americans whom the left perceives, perceives as its political opponents. To truly secure the homeland, a conservative administration needs to return the department to the right mission, the right size, and the right budget. This would include reorganizing the department and shifting significant resources away from several supporting components to the essential operational components, prioritizing border security and immigration enforcement, including detention and deportation, is critical if we are to regain control of the border, repair the historic damage done by the Biden administration, and return to a lawful and orderly immigration system, and protect the homeland from terrorism and public safety threats. This also includes consolidating the pieces of fragmented immigration system into one agency to fulfill the mission more efficiently. Okay, cool. So this this reads to me like instead of having an immigration system, they just want to have a barrier. They just want to have a barrier that keeps brown people out of the United States. Maybe I'm incorrect here. Maybe there's a reading of this that is far more nuanced than what I'm giving Project 2025 right now. But this feels like a way to try to get rid of several ways that we try to support immigrants and instead try to facilitate ways to make life harder for them or, you know, just deport them all together. Do you remember that thing that uh, DeSantis did where he... Uh, illegally human trafficked a whole bunch of immigrants uh, to a sanctuary city. Do you remember that? And it wasn't even the one that they wanted to go to, and it, it may have led to many of them being deported when they were in the middle of their, like, conversations about citizenship. Do you, do you remember that? These people... Ninja says, so are we going to have security gates that check melatonin levels as you pass through them? Again, we don't freak out about Canadians immigrating to the United States because a bunch of Canadians don't want to fucking be here. We're not worried about snow Mexicans. We're worried about brown ones, apparently. Oi, oi, oi. The bloated DHS bureaucracy and budget, along with the wrong priorities, provide real opportunities for a conservative administration to cut billions in spending and limited, limit the government's roles in America's lives. These opportunities include privatizing TSA screening. Privatizing it, huh? What? We, we want to have private firms doing this instead of the United States government? What? Why? Oh, that's why. Uh, because conservatives in the United States, at least conservative politicians, are largely concerned with getting the bag. They are largely concerned with making sure that lobby interest groups are lining their pockets. So this reads to me like there was an interest group that talked to some of the people who are in charge at the Heritage Foundation about their private firm being able to offload some of this uh, stuff from the government. A private firm that would be far less accountable to United States tax-paying citizens. Oy, oy, oy. They want to secure and control the border, thoroughly enforce immigration laws, correctly and efficiently adjudicate immigration benefit applications while rejecting fraudulent claims, secure the cyber domain and collaborate with critical infrastructure sectors to maintain their security, provide states and localities with limited federal emergency response preparedness, secure our coasts, protect political leaders and their families, uh, and oversee transportation security. Cool, cool, cool. In the next admin, the Office of Secretary should take on the following key issues and challenges to ensure the effective operation of the DHS, expansion of the dedicated political personnel, an aggressive approach to Senate-confirmed leadership positions, clearer, more durable, and political-only line of succession. Well, based on previous experiences, the department needs legislation to establish a more durable but politically oriented line of succession for agency decision-making purposes. The ideal sequence or line of succession is certainly debatable, except that in circumstances where a career employee holds a leadership position in the department, that position should be deemed vacant for line of succession purposes, and the next eligible political appointee in the se uh, sequence should assume acting authority. 
Okay, so this part's actually kind of alarming. This part's actually kind of alarming to me. And it's alarming to me because the language earlier in the document talks a lot about how instead of having experts in certain fields, they should only have political appointees from the president. Basically, the loyalist yes-men for Trump, or whichever conservative happens to be in the office at the time. But we all know that this was all written with the idea of having Trump in as president. So this looks like it's trying to privatize part of the DHS, the part that checks people into the country, it looks like. And then, while also privatizing that part, uh, making it less accountable to American taxpayers, they want to, instead of having experts in their fields in positions of power in these agencies, they want to replace them once again with Trump loyalists. Which is great. It's just fantastic. Uh, Silly Shinobi, thank you for the stretch. This is wonderful. Isn't it great? Isn't it great when the government is going, hey, um, we're just going to offload this shit to a private company that's doing this for profit instead of us that are doing it, you know, because it's a service that needs to be done. And oh, by the way, the people in charge now are Nepo babies. They are people who have been brought in for Trump by Trump and not for any other reason. This is a way to get more of those people who are important yes men for the would be fascist into positions of power and influence. Kazooie says, uh, isn't this existential threat to democracy fun? Oh, yeah, it's fun. It's amazing. It's fantastic. Soft closure of unnecessary offices. I don't know why what they consider unnecessary offices here. Um, restructuring and redistribution of career personnel to strengthen political decision making and ensure the taxpayer dollars are being used legally and efficiently. The secretary should make major changes in the distribution of career personnel throughout the department. For example, personnel from parts of the department undergoing soft closure could be redistributed to what be workload intensive corners of the department, including national security, critical and transparency functions. All personnel with law enforcement capacity should be removed immediately from office billets and deployed to field billets to maximize law enforcement capacity. So if you're somebody who has a degree of police training, fuck you, you're a beat cop now. That's what you get to do. Compliance for grants and other federal funding. Non-use of discretionary guest worker visa authorities to stop facilitating the availability of cheap foreign labor in order to support American workers, particularly poor and middle class American workers, and to follow congressional intent. The secretary should explicitly cease using at least two discretionary authorities as part of their broader effort uh, to support American workers. The secretary should make it clear that he or she will not use the secretary's existing discretionary authority to increase the number of H2B seasonal non-agricultural visas above the statutorily set cap. Oh, this is just trying to prevent more people from having working visas. This is just trying to prevent people from having fucking working visas. This is just trying to have a barrier there. So even people who are here on working visas, who are here literally legally, they're just like, nah, we gotta, we gotta cut down on that. We gotta cut down on that. You can't, you can't legally work here. I know you legally can work here, but we can't let you legally work here. That would be, you know, bad. That would be really, really bad. Replace the entire Homeland Security Advisory Committee. The Secretary should plan to quickly remove all current members of the Homeland Security Advisory Committee and replace them as quickly as is feasible. Ah, yes, if you're on the Advisory Committee right now, uh, your job is just up in smoke if Trump gets uh, elected. Because... We got to get those loyalists in. We got to get those appointees in. That's what's more important anyway. The BSIA should establish clear mission requirements, responsibilities, and mandates under existing laws during the persistent need and utilization of U.S. military personnel and resources to assist the BSIA with increasing whole-of-government uh, efforts and long-term strategies to secure our nation's borders effectively. In addition, appropriate elements within the newly created BSA, BSIA should be designated as parts of the U.S. National Security and Intelligence Committee. And that's the uh, border protection stuff here okay that's border security and information agency is what they're trying to go for here 
a conservative administration should eliminate any prohibitive guidance direction and mandate from the DHS or the administration that curtails or limits uh, from publishing detailed border security and enforcement data not impacting intelligence indirection and investigative operations methods or sources. DHS should issue a regulation mandating that CBP publish accurate and timely border security data readily available to the public on a regular basis that avoid White House and DHS leadership review and approval. The White House should grant the authority for CBP and DHS executives to utilize component aviation assets under the Office of Air and Marine. Okay, so now we are starting to get into stuff that I personally do not understand. And I am willing to admit when I am out of my depth on a document. And as of right now, I am out of my depth on what the end results of most of this are. The alarming parts to me, largely, and I guess I'll close this section out, uh, mainly because I, I know we're getting to the point where I will simply be reading and not actually be giving any insightful insight because I don't have any, because this is outside of my expertise. If you are an expert in these fields, uh, we're currently in pages 160 through wherever this section ends in the Mandate for Leadership, and the Mandate for Leadership is available online. Actually, if you would like to assist in giving notes on any of this stuff, there is a Project 2025 section of my Discord where if you read through this document and you have any bits of information you would like to give, then that is the place where you can give it. That all said... Where I'm sitting right now, the parts that alarm me the most are the room, uh, trying to curate all the agencies down, privatize certain ones, which this should be done by the government period. This shouldn't be privatized. Um, and trying to get rid of people who are in these careers already and instead put in political appointees by Trump. That's the stuff that worries me. The end results of that are fucking terrifying where I'm concerned. So... That's where I have to leave this particular section off on because it is, quite frankly, very information dense and it is not in an area where I consider myself an expert or even autodidactically learned. I, I cannot, I cannot in good faith give a review of this section of the document. So, if y'all don't like that kind of honesty and transparency, eh, maybe fuck off my channel. That said, let me know what you think in the comments section below. If you have any feedback for this particular section, as I am out of my depth, then let me know down there as well. With that said, as always, everybody, insert in the video tagline here. Hey, just wanted to give a quick thank you to all of my wonderful patrons who help keep me afloat and help keep this channel going. YouTube and Twitch are wonderful platforms, but at the end of the day, stability is not one of their strong suits. If you want to support my channel, then obviously Patreon is one of the best ways of doing that. Link is in the description. But I do want to personally thank everybody who has contributed to the channel. Those people would be Red Joker, Purple Poundini, Gemshin, Britzkrieg, Jupe the Malignant, Michael, Ravalern, Mabity Babity, Astral Frontier, Autumn and Angel, Nixie Chan, Mark Anthony, Victorian Alchemist, Sagitt I'm not saying the last part of that, and you know that. Arcton Arc Lassier, Curatorian, Dren Hadamata, Jordan M, John L, Lord Bleck, Smiling Game Master, and Fire Shard and everyone else who supports my channel and lets me do what I do full time. This is a dream job of mine that I never believed that I would be able to take full time, and with your help, I've been able to do it. So thank you so, so very much for that. Thank you for watching the video. I hope you all enjoy, and I hope you all are having a wonderful time. I will see you all in the next one, hopefully.